Hi, this is Omar Sultan with the Cisco Data Center Solutions team, and I am here with Brian Schwartz. Uh, Brian, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, uh, Brian's been uh, kind enough to take some time out of his hectic schedule to uh, take us through a couple of walkthroughs of the uh, UCS Manager. So, Brian, without further ado, I'll hand things over to you. Thanks, Omar. Um, so I just want to give you a quick overview of the UCS Manager. We're looking at uh, the graphical user interface here. Um, just want to give you a quick overview of what's in the system. So you can see here uh, some of the main tabs along the, uh, the top of the system. Um, first thing we can see is UCS Manager is a device manager. It's embedded in the system, has uh, drill down information on uh, all the equipment that's part of the UCS Manager instance in this case. We have uh, a chassis hooked up to this system. It's got a single blade in the, uh, in the top left here um, of our chassis, the UCS 5100. Um, and I can drill down and see all types of details about the, uh, about the server itself. Um, you know, there's information, all the, you know, classic device manager stuff about how much memory, uh, how many cores and CPUs, Nix HBAs and things like that in the system. Um, this system also has um, a mezzanine card on it, which in this case it's actually a, a converged network adapter, a CNA, um, that presents both um, HBAs and Nix to the operating system. This one happens to be based on uh, an Emulex HBA chip. Um, in addition to all of the, you know, the nice stuff we do around the servers themselves, um, you also see all of the network components, obviously. So the UCS 6100, um, you can see here, is the, uh, the fabric interconnect in this environment. And in this case, we have a couple different ports set up in the environment. There's uh, two of these ports here, 17 and 18, are essentially what we consider the downlinks that connect down to the chassis. And the uplink Ethernet port is what would connect to the upper layers of the SAN. So the, you know, the first important thing about the UCS manager is that it's the device manager, so you see all of the equipment, and it's, it's incredibly granular. You, know, you can go in here and dive down on the server and see you know, individual DIMMs that are populated on any individual server across the entire, you know, up to 40 chassis, 320 blades, as well as, obviously, you can see um, device managers do diagnostics and kind of error detection fault management, so you can see if you have good hardware or not. Cool. in the system. Um, second thing I'd just quickly show you is on the um, server tab and we've created some of these tabs, the server LAN and SAN tab, because we do expect, you know, there's a lot of role specialization that goes on in the data center that each kind of specialist will kind of have a natural home where they'll do most of their work. So in light of that, could uh, is there like a role-based access control mechanism? So, so with a certain login, you could only allow access to the SANs or the VMs or those yep, kind of things? Yep, yep. I'm going to show you that over here on the admin tab in a minute. Okay, cool. Um, so here you can see um, the server tab, you know, the, the primary kind of management construct or, or configuration construct in, inside of UCS is, a, is something we call a service profile, of which I already have a couple populated in the system here. Um, you're generally going to have them for different types of workloads in the environment because they need different types of network connectivity. They often exist on different VLANs and, and things like that. You can see uh, one of them here is already, uh, already created. It's actually associated with that uh, chassis one, blade one that we saw over on the other tab here in a minute. Okay. Some of these other ones um, are essentially, they're not associated, meaning they're kind of stored in the network waiting for you to apply it to a blade. Okay. Um, and these are arbitrary, right? We, I mean, we could have these line by application or line of business or whatever a customer chooses to. A absolutely. These are those uh, names, ESX1 and Rack Node 1. Those are just friendly names that I've given those service profiles. You can you could choose them by, you know, if you were in a like, service provider environment, you might name them by customer, you know, okay. customer A, customer B, customer C, that type of thing. And, of course, we have, uh, you can create these manually, although we also have templates that if you're going to create a whole set of them that are going to look similar, there's a template concept. Sure. So you can kind of stamp out a, stamp out a bunch of them. Cool. Um, so that's a you know, quick survey of the, the server tab. Over here on the LAN tab, you have a bunch of the network um, related characteristics of the, of the UCS system itself. So you can go in and configure things like the system class. So we use data center Ethernet kind of as the foundation of our networking. A okay. um, couple different ways to do Ethernet quality of service, you know, gold, silver, bronze here. We also have, a, a, you know, obviously one of the, the system classes is reserved for FCOE traffic. Okay. And uh, important thing for all FCOE traffic is no packet drops, right? This is a, a lossless form of Ethernet, right? This is good. And um, of course, you have VLANs, which are kind of named named VLANs, and these are the VLAN IDs here, 500, 57, etc., which you're often going to create once, but you might use them many, many times in many service profiles. Sure. So the network admin might come in here and set up a whole, you know, dozen or two dozen of these things to be used on service profiles as new service profiles come into the environment. 
Sure. So if I make a change to a service profile, is it propagated immediately or is it uh, propagated on, on the next activation of that profile? Um, the, the service profile, obviously, if it's not attached to a server, mm -hmm. you're just making a change kind of in memory because it's kind of in the network, I'll say. Sure. Um, for certain um, things like VLANs, you can change those on the fly. Okay. So if a service profile is associated, you just want to go and add a VLAN. It's kind of like going to a switch and adding it to, to the port in some, some respects. Okay. Um, so it just happens automatically. Other things, you know, if you want us to go and the change you make to the service profile is push a new version of firmware, yeah, obviously. You know, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we actually reboot the server automatically and push sure. the firmware on there for you. Okay. So it's a little bit more destructive. It would be done during planned downtime type environments. Okay. Um, quick survey of the, uh, the SAM tab. This is largely about um, two, two, two concepts. One is um, uplinks, so fiber channel uplinks, because sure. we don't send FCOA traffic northbound. It's native fiber channel traffic yep. going northbound and configuring what those uplinks look like and any vSANs that those are going to be connected to. As well as, and you, you might have seen this on the other tab, we have uh, extensive use of kind of pools and policies in our environment where we try to capture best practices in the policies to be reused over and over again. So server team has some policies, you know, land team, SAN team has some policies that are reused and consumed in the service profiles, as well as the construct of pools, particularly for addressing constructs, so worldwide names and oh, MAC cool. addresses okay. and UUIDs. So you can create a pool that you know is kind of unique in your environment, and then you can just pull from the pool. When you're, you know, using those templates that I talked about earlier to create, let's say, 10 service profiles, sure. you just want to pull IDs from a pool. You don't want to have to go in and kind of manually add them. Okay, cool. That makes sense. And uh, let me just, uh, another quick tour here, show you a couple things on the admin tab. Um, this is kind of the super user tab that has some of the main constructs across, you know, the overall UCS system. So, you know, one of the nice things is we have a, you know, a full audit log on the system. You can uh, go and... Um, It'll basically capture everything that the server, the LAN, or the SAN administrator would have done in the system. Okay. It's actually uh, the retrieval is um, it's running a client here. It's going to the the UCS 6100 and basically collecting all the information because that's where it's all all replicated. And you can go in here and um, you can see I was uh, you know kind of prepping the system. I created a bunch of the service profiles. And to your um, your question earlier. Um, we do have a bunch of um, locally authenticated users, um, and you can see, let me just uh, show the roles here real quick, oh. that we have some predefined roles that come, so like a, a network admin has certain privileges in the system to configure certain LAN characteristics. We have other ones, you know, if you go down here and look at the, uh, you know, the storage role, it has um, abilities to configure those uplink um, uh, SAN characteristics that I talked about. Sure. Um, and then, of course, you know, this is actually a new role that I created that was a hybrid role. You know, okay. So we have some built-in defaults, but every organization has different kind of boundaries in terms of who does what. You can go in and, um, in these privileges, create kind of hybrid roles in the environment as well that, cool. that better match your organization. So for, like, folks that have SAN teams, LAN teams, and, and then virtualization teams, they, they, they can pretty much slice and dice this in whatever suits their... their uh, organizational structure. Yep. So I think that's a, a good quick overview of the, the top level of the UCS manager GUI. And cool. in uh, future sessions, we'll dive into a couple more of the details. Cool. So an important question. So you've shown us the, the cool GUI interface. But the reality is the back end of this is an XML uh, database, right? So everything that we've done with the GUI, um, folks could actually write XML queries and code to yeah. access it directly? Yeah, absolutely. So our, 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 this is a Java GUI. It's, a, it's actually written on top of our XML API. So um, one, we expect a lot of ISVs, but also some of our you know, sophisticated customers to use the XML to programmatically control the system. Sure. And one easy way to do that is to actually use the GUI, and then you can actually see the XML going back and forth between essentially this Java client in the XML, kind of the brain of the uh, the UCS manager, which is running uh, in the UCS 6100. Cool. Thank you. I think we can wrap up with this one.